Welcome to this video on the Raspberry Pi Pico 2 and its advantages over the original Pi Pico. I'm your host, Christian. We analyzed the execution speed as well as the memory footprint of identical C code compiled for both boards. Since the hardware and SDK are quite new, the numbers we are going to show you should be considered an impression, not a comprehensive and eternal judgment on the Pico 2. We will, however, get into details about the code, benchmarking and verification methodology we used, so you can decide how many grains of salt to take with our numbers. We are a development tool vendor and not a media outlet. This video is a byproduct of our efforts in developing and porting our embedded timing and memory footprint analysis tool T1 to the new Pico 2. We modified our existing clock drift demonstrator setup by replacing one of the Pi Picos with a Pico 2 and compiling the same software for both board types using the Pi Pico SDK version 2.0.0. Special thanks go to my colleague Germano, who did the port blindly before the hardware even arrived. Using a T1 beta version to obtain performance numbers on a brand new hardware requires a bit of sanity checking with well-established tools. In our case, we relied on GPIO pins and a logic analyzer, as well as eyeball mark one and disassembly to make sure we are not reporting fiction, polite or otherwise. For our analysis, we are using our cross-board clock drift and synchronization demonstrator. It consists of four original Pi Picos networked via an I2C bus. We replace the last board in the chain with a Pico 2 to get a direct comparison. If you are interested in T1 or the sync demonstrator, feel free to check out the other videos on the channel. Although we are a member of the Powered by Raspberry Pi program, the good people at Raspberry Pi don't sponsor this video. They do not get to see it before its release. And in fact, they do not even know that we are making it. My opinions on the Pi Pico 2 are my own. This video does have a sponsor though, Peter Gliever, founder and CEO of our company. You should definitely check out his book, Embedded Software Timing. If you work at a large company or study at a university, chances are quite good you can grab a PDF version directly through your institution's Springerlink subscription. Now let's look at the Pi Pico 2 and how it performs compared to the original Pi Pico. SL2 is an original Pico and SL3 is a Pico 2. Both are running at the same clock speed and executing the same application source code compiled for each chip with the Pico SDK 2.0.0. All chips run on their ARM cores, Cortex-M0 Plus and M33, at 125 MHz, the clock speed we used for our timing sync demonstrator. Since the Pico 2 is specified for 150 MHz and the original Pico for 133 MHz, there is additional performance gain to be had by using the higher clock ceiling of the Pico 2, if required. Our demo application has tasks and interrupt service routines on core 0 and a smaller set on core 1. Today we are going to look exclusively at some benchmark code that is running on the 50 millisecond cyclic task on core 0. The benchmark functions are called by the task function. That makes them runnables in automotive embedded language. The chips are brand new. The T1 port is work in progress. We will therefore look at the regular code performance today and skip more advanced topics like interrupt latency and intercore access conflicts. Putting the 50 millisecond task and benchmark runnables on both chips next to each other, we can immediately see a significant performance gain with the Pico 2. In order to verify our numbers, we wrapped the double precision float implementation of the Babylonian square root in a GPIO pulse, high, square root, low. 
wrap that package into a T1 stopwatch, and finally wrap the entire thing into another GPIO pulse on a second pin. The GPIO pulses were captured using a logic analyzer. The graph shows the results for inner pulse, T1 stopwatch, and outer pulse from bottom to top, with minimum, average, and maximum results from left to right. T1's results for both the PICO and the PICO2 fall inside the boundaries of the GPIO pulses at all time. The blue bar compares the average runtime on the original Pi Pico to the average runtime on the Pi Pico 2. The green bar compares the best case runtime for a single instance of the benchmark code on the Pi Pico against the best case achieved on the Pico 2. The numbers represent the speed up factor, the number of times the Pico 2 is faster than the original Pico. For K1 divide, which is integer division, 3.4 and 4.6. For K2 mod, which is modulus calculation based on integer division, 3.6 to 4. For K3 square root, using integer approximation, 1.7 and 1.55. For a finite impulse response filter, 1.6 to 1.7, based on integer multiply accumulate and also a lot of mem copies. For copying data from flash to RAM, 1.34, copying data from RAM to RAM, roughly 1.4, performing floating math, 3.6 to 4. Shell sort algorithm 1.5 in both cases, counting set bits in a processor word 2 and 1.8, and then the implementations of the Babylonian approximation algorithm for square roots, also known as Heron's algorithm, in unsigned integer 2 to 2.5 in single precision float, 7 to 10, and finally in double precision float, 1.7 to 2. Now let's take a closer look at some interesting cases. Division. Our first benchmark function, k1 divide nicely showcases the difference between the original Pico's Cortex-M0 Plus and the Pico 2's larger Cortex-M33. It consists of a simple loop loading values from a table of pseudo-random numbers and dividing them by each other. The same code runs almost 4.7 times faster at the same clock speed. A look at the disassembly shows why. The Pico 2 can execute integer division in hardware, in this case the UDIF instruction, where the original Pico needs to call an entire subroutine. Apart from that rather obvious difference, there are other factors at play here. The Pico 2 can do the loop setting up the division in 8 instructions, using 28 bytes, where the original Pico requires 12 instructions, although only 24 bytes. Once the actual division happens, the slight code density advantage of the original Pico is of course negated by the single instruction division of the Pico 2 versus the entire subroutine called by the original Pico. Or is it? Maybe the subroutine is entirely in ROM anyway, then it would not take up any space, would it? T1 stack analysis function can tell us, since it builds a call tree from the machine code in order to calculate stack usage. So, on the original Pico, k1 divide calls a wrapper, which calls state handlers, which call veneers, which finally call the ROM based function. That goes a long way in explaining the significant speed up of the Pico 2 in this scenario. Since we already have the stack analysis view open, 
Let's check the import on stack usage real quick. The K1 divide benchmark function on its own consumes 24 bytes of stack memory. And the entire call chain I just described brings that up to 56. On the Pico 2, there is no subroutine call and only 12 bytes of direct stack consumption. A look at the respective push and pop instructions used on both chips quickly validates the claim by T1 stack. But why can the Pico 2 get away with saving less registers? There are several reasons, but to pick one, let's see how the simple task of looping a certain number of times is done. The loop count is passed as the first parameter and therefore initially in register R0. Both picos use the ZAP instruction together with the BNE instruction. The Pico 2 can work directly with the value in R0, subtract 1 and store the result status flags at the beginning of the loop, then react to that result 10 instructions later with the BNE. The original Pico cannot selectively store result flags. Therefore, it has to use a separate CMP instruction right before the BNE. On top of that, there are limitations on addressing and called subroutines will trash register R0. So the loop count has to be copied from R0 to R4 in order to preserve it. That, among other factors, forced the original Pico to push and pop a larger amount of registers in this case, increasing stack RAM consumption. While there is a hardware divider on the original Pico, the programmer has to write custom code for it. So if you have to use a lot of integer division on an original Pi Pico, that is something to consider. Floating point operations. The Pi Pico 2 provides hardware support for floating point calculations. The original Pico does not. Therefore, one would expect a huge performance boost for that kind of code. By far the most significant speedup occurred with the single precision floating point implementation of the Babylonian square root algorithm. A look at the disassembly immediately shows why. The Pico 2 uses dedicated machine instructions, replacing all subroutine calls the original Pico has to make. And that makes even more than the observed 10x speedup quite plausible. But why then does K7 float math only gain about 4x? The disassembly shows a function call to a double precision software floating point routine, even on the Pico 2. The reason is revealed by a close look at the source code. The addition of constants to the variable b, what looks like a single precision float constant to the casual observer, is actually double precision. As for the double precision Babylonian square root algorithm, the slightly more than 3x speedup seems high for pure software-based emulation, but low for hardware. While the Cortex-M33 only contains a single precision floating point unit, the Pi Pico 2 does come with some extra hardware support for double precision. The datasheet describes a double precision code processor and indeed, after following a chain of calls, there are the coprocessor instructions described in the datasheet. This code got generated automatically from C code when C code is using the double data type. Definitely more convenient than using the integer divider hardware on the original Pi Pico. It is early days with respect to Pi Pico 2 benchmarking. But I personally like what I see. Every kind of code gets faster, on a cycle by cycle basis nonetheless. If you need to use floating point arithmetic, you are much better off. Digital signal processing using integer arithmetic also benefits a lot from hardware division and multiply accumulate. RAM consumption and to a lesser degree flash consumption is reduced. At the same time, the Pico 2 comes with double the amount of RAM and flash each, as well as a higher maximum specified clock speed. All that as a drop-in replacement for existing applications, should you need the new features, is quite useful. We at Cleva will continue to enhance T1 support for the entire Raspberry Pi lineup, both Pico and regular, 
And both Pico generations will see increasing deployment in our own automated test infrastructure. This is it for today. If you are interested in embedded systems, please feel free to share, visit our website at kleber.com and or obtain a copy of Peter's book, Embedded Software Timing. Thank you for your attention.